In Creole Parametric, you can define the manufacturing model for a sand casting. In part one, we started the manufacturing model, we located the reference part, then defined a workpiece and applied shrinkage to the reference model. In part two, we defined the sand core for the manufacturing model. In this video, we are going to place the sprue and the runner into the workpiece. And I will probably want to use the sprue over and over again in other subsequent sand castings. So I'm going to define a UDF and then locate it in this model. Let me start off by setting my working directory. I'll go to File, Manage Session, set, select Working Directory, and then navigate to the folder where I store my UDFs. I use C Creo UDF. Now I'll click the OK button. Let's create the reference part that will contain the sprue cut. I'll go to the new button and then we have part selected and solid. And let's see for the name of the model, I am going to call it my sprue reference for lack of creativity. And I'm going to uncheck the use default template. I just want to make sure that I'm using a metric start part. Okay, let me turn on my datum plane display. And I'm going to choose to create a block on the datum plane called front. Let me go into sketch mode and go to my sketch view and turn on my plane display. I'm going to sketch in a rectangle and make it about from here to there. That's good. And I want it to be symmetric, so let's throw in a geometry center line. And then I'll use my symmetric constraint for the center line and the two vertices I want to be symmetric about it. Now let's start changing our dimensions. This is almost exactly what I want. Let's use a value of 300 for that. And then this dimension can be smaller. Let's use a value of 200. Now I will hit the check mark. Let's extrude this to make our block. And for the block, let's use also a value of 200. And hit the check mark. Okay, so now, oh, did I make that symmetric? Let me edit definition. Yeah, let's make it symmetric. That way, when I create my sprue cut, it'll be right in the middle of the model. Okay, so that is good. Now let's create a, another sketch, and I will use the use previous command and let me go to my sketch view and I know that I want to revolve this later on so I'm going to throw in a center line unlike the geometry or the sketching center line that I used for my symmetric constraint I'm actually going to use a center line from the datum group that way I can make it as my axis of revolution with the center line still selected I will right mouse click and choose designate the axis of revolution. All right, so for the geometry for this, let me start out by sketching a line, and then it's going to go down a distance, and then a flat line over here, and then some angled lines, and then it's gonna go straight for a while, and then out at an angle at the top, and then close it off. So that is a good start. Now let's start changing some of the different dimensions in here. And some of the dimensions that were suggested I actually like. Let me go to a no hidden line mode just so I can see some of these different dimensions better. Let me grab this dimension and this should be a value of 50. Let me see, I also like this dimension but it should be a little smaller. Let's make this a value of 60 and let's see let's control this dimension here this should be a value of 90 and now I got to start making some different dimensions let's create a dimension for the overall height I'm going to change that to 175 and let's see let me just grab this point just see if I can just drag it let me get out of dimension mode and just drag it a little bit and drag this one a little bit as well okay so let's see some other dimensions i want let's control this angle and this one should be 20 degrees another dimension that i want is going to be the distance from here to here and i want that to be a value of 25 
and also the dimension from here to here. I want that also to be a value of 25. And let's see, I've got one more weak dimension and this weak dimension here, this should actually be a value of 50. And I think I pretty much have everything that I want for the sketch. So let's hit the check mark. And I'll go back to a shading with edges display. And with that sketch still selected, I will right mouse click and hold to get to my mini toolbar so that I can revolve this. It automatically removed material, which is a, what I want. It automatically used the internal center line. That's also good. So now I can hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. And so now that I have my geometry for the sprue cut, I'm going to save this out to a file so that I can easily place it into other different models. Let's go to the tools menu and I will choose from the utilities group UDF library. This opens up the old menu manager from Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier. And occasionally you'll see it around the Creo interface still these days. Let me go to the create command. And the first thing that it asks is a name for the UDF. And I will just call this sprue for lack of originality. Now it asks me if I want this to be standalone or subordinate. Subordinate means that it will be linked to this part file and I am fine with that. Let's choose done out of there. The next step is to select the features that we want. And I will use the control key to select both the sketch and the revolve and then click OK, done, and done. And now it's going to highlight the different references necessary for placing this in a, another model. So for that reference, I'm going to choose placement, surface, and then we have a reference for the mid-plane of the sprue. So let me call that sprue mid-plane. And then we have the sprue top surface. And then now it's highlighting an edge from the top surface of the model. Let me just call that top surface edge. Maybe I accidentally used that as a reference for something, maybe a dimension. And then we have a prompt for the body. So let me just call it the body. All right, so now we have the opportunity to rewrite the prompts if we don't like them. If you take a look in the lower left-hand corner, it tells, what, tells us what the current prompt is. I will accept it. And everything is defined now, although we could add some other different variable elements. So for example, maybe I want someone to be able to change the height of the sprue. So I will select that dimension and then done return and done and then a prompt for the dimension value. I will call that the sprue height and hit the enter key. So I am happy with that. I will click the OK button. And so in the message area tells me that the group has been stored. Let's hit the save button in order to save this part in our working directory. I can hit done return out of the menu manager. Now that my sprue has been created, I can close this file to go back to my main window. Let's now turn on the datum plane display. And let me turn off some of the items that are visible just to unclutter the computer screen. And for placing the sprue, I want it located on a datum plane offset from this plane. So I will select the plane and then use the plane icon and then I can drag it out and I want it a distance of 120. Let me enter in an exact value and I'll go to the properties tab and I will rename this to my sprue placement plane. All right, let's click the OK button and I'm going to redo some clutter some more. Let's turn off the display of the cast front plane. And I don't need the parting plane for this operation. Let me hide that one as well. So now I can bring in the user defined feature. And so the command for placing the user defined feature 
is right up here. And here I have my group directory, my UDF library. I will grab the part that I just stored. Then you have the option of advanced reference configuration. That just means that we're going to define the references necessary to place this in the model. I will click the OK button. And so now it is highlighting in the accessory window the reference model that I stored. And so for the placement plane, I will choose that datum plane that I just created. For the mid plane, I will choose the datum plane called right. And for the top plane, I will choose this surface. And again, for some reason, it wants an edge. I'll just choose that edge there. Everything looks great. Oh, wait, let me go to the intersect tab. And so for the intersected models, let me select the valve body reference part. And that's good. Let me hit the check mark. And so now I can turn off my datum plane display for a moment. We have the geometry for our sprue. For the next one that I'm going to put in here, rather than create a UDF first, I'm just going to create a cut for the runner that goes from the sprue to the reference model. Let me turn on the display of my main parting plane again. And I don't need this particular plane, so let me hide it. And for my new sketch, I will click on the sketch icon and let's choose for the main parting plane and cast right to face right. That sounds good to me. Let me now go to my sketch view. And for this one, actually, let me rotate it again. It will be helpful for me to select one of my sketch references first. Let me right mouse click and hold and go to references. And I want to lock right into, let me query till I get to the edge of the sprue. And let's see another one that I want. Let me go to my sketch view. I'm going to grab the silhouette edge of my reference model. That's good. Let me click the close button out of there. And for my runner, I'll just throw in a couple circles located at the intersection of the references. And I will let them snap to the same diameter. Let's Double click on the dimension. I'm going to change it to a value of 10. Let me throw in a couple of two tangent lines. Tangent to this and this and tangent to this and this. And I'll use my friend squiggle trim to get rid of some of the overlapping areas. And the profile ends up being shaded. That looks great. Let's hit the check mark. And so now I will rotate the model and turn off my plane display. And then I can right mouse click with the sketch still selected to get to my mini toolbar. I'm going to choose to extrude. And let me flip the direction for the first one and change the height here to a value of 6. And with a lot of sprues, I see that they tend to have a sort of oct or hexagonal shape. Let me throw in some taper. I'll go to the options tab. Let's add our taper. And I'm just going to make this about five degrees. Let me double click on the value. And that looks good. I will hit the check mark. Oops, let me go back to the extrude and edit definition. And it is removing material, but I'm going to go to the intersection tab. I always like to turn off automatic update. That can be an issue in big assemblies, uh, but this is not a big assembly model. I just want to make sure that it is intersecting the correct models. It does not need to intersect the core, so I will remove that from the list. So that's good. Let's hit the check mark. And I'm going to right click on the feature so that I can mirror it. Mirror it about the datum plane for the parting plane. That's good. And I'll hit the check mark. And for the intersected models, I will just select the workpiece and then click the OK button. So now I've got the geometry in the part for my sprue and also for my runner. I can be good to myself and I can rename this to be my runner and rename the mirror feature to the runner mirror just to make the model more intuitive. 
But there we have it. That's the additional geometry that I wanted to place in here. In the next video, we will define our parting surface, our volumes, and then extract the core and the cavity.